Good afternoon. Good afternoon, and thank you to Governor McMaster and, and Lieutenant Governor Evans, um, and members of the General Assembly who are here, um, and many of our partners in the work of the Child Health and Wellbeing System for joining us today at the ceremonial bill for signing of H3509 Extension of Foster Care. It has been a long road to bring this legislation over the finish line. I'd like to also specifically thank Senator Katrina Shealy as the primary bill sponsor in the Senate. Right there. And Representative Russell Fry is the bill's primary sponsor in the House. And Senate President Thomas Alexander for his support and Representative Wes Cox. Thank you also to the Joint Citizens and Legislative Committee on Children for the committee's endorsement of the legislation. Members include Representative Beth Bernstein, Representative Neil Collins, Representative Ray Felder, Senator Brad Hutto, Senator Daryl Jackson, and Senator Katrina Shealy. Thank you to each of you for working for the youth in South Carolina. Extending foster care services until a youth's 21st birthday was enacted at the federal level by the passage of the uh, tra Fostering Transitions to Success and Increasing Adoptions Act in 2008 which expanded funding to states that elected to extend foster care to 21. Previously, South Carolina was just two, uh, one of two states, along with Oklahoma, that did not include a provision in the state law for this type of program. South Carolina filed the state legislation for the first time in January 2021. Through this voluntary program, which currently serves 164 young people in our state, services provided to these youth include assistance with housing, transportation, education, training, case management, and preparing these youth for the transition to adulthood. By adding the statute change in the state law, the South Carolina will now be able to draw down federal $40 to help fund this program and expand the program and provide additional supports for our young people. Our DSS professionals have been working on this idea for several years and I'd like to recognize them and their hard work. Taryn Davis, our Associate General Counsel at DSS who researched and draft the legislation. Conley Ann Ragley, our agency's legislative liaison and director of communications and external affairs. And Susan Robin, our agency's chief financial officer on their respective work on this legislation. And last but not least, thanks to Patrice White and Jamie Stanley with the Chafee ETB program at DSS. Both of you have embraced our vision to help youth as they transition to adulthood and have poured your heart and soul into helping these young people have access to tools to become successful independent youth in South Carolina. And most importantly, I'm joined at today's event by young people who have experienced the foster care system firsthand, many of who have aged out on their 18th birthday. These youth have provided testimony, both virtually and in person, during the legislative process to bring a real world view to this work and to highlight the youth that will be helped in the future by this legislation. These youth are agency's YEA, or YEAH, which is our youth engagement advocates. And we will have a chance to hear from two of these young people, Zoe and Sierra, in just a moment. Please give all of these incredible youth a round of applause for being here today and for their engagement in the policymaking process. Now I'd like to turn it over to Senator Katrina Shealy, Chairwoman of the Senate Family and Veterans Services Committee and a leader on getting this legislation through the General Assembly. Senator Shealy. Good afternoon. This is a very exciting day for all of us, legislators, social workers, foster families, but perhaps most exciting for our young people who will now have the resources and support to get a good, strong footing in this world. There are so many people to thank for making this happen. Some of them that have already been thanked, but I'm gonna thank you again. But to name a few, Conley Ann Ragley at the Department of Social Services, for push, pushing this legislation over the finish line, coordinating testimony, and being a voice for so many young people in this state. Senator Tom, Senator Tom Young, who chaired both of our subcommittees on this legislation with my version last year that passed the Senate unanimously and the House version this year. Patrice White and Jamie Stanley with Chaffee ETV, and many, many thanks to the young people in yay is how I understand it's supposed to be, youth engagement advocates who came and testified at both of our hearings and were fantastic ambassadors for young people in foster care. There is much more work to be done to support children and families, 
but this year has shown remarkable success and progress for which we owe a great deal of thanks to Mike Leach for this leadership at DSS. And now I turn it over to Representative Fry, who has helped get this bill through the House Judiciary Committee. Many thanks. Where is he? He's back here. You know, this is what happens when a team comes together for the good of this state. This is easy, y'all. This is an easy policy. And when it was told to me, and I had conversations with Senator Sheely and Conley and Ragley and um, a whole host of stakeholders that we were one of two states that didn't have this, I said, well, we got to change that. And I know the Children's Committee, Beth Bernstein, Neil Collins, Wes Cox, y'all have been true leaders on this as well. Um, but this is easy. And when you think about it, people that I knew growing, growing up were in foster care. And I thought about them when we pushed this bill in the House and in the Senate. Um, and I thought about how this would impact them, people that I grew up with. And this, you know, it seems easy to us because it's so common sense. But this is going to have a real lasting impact on the children of our state. And so I'm excited to be a part of it. I'm excited that we were able to push it across the finish line. And now we'll see the governor sign it here shortly. But don't hear it from me. We're going to hear from some, some really bright youth that testified to this. You know, it's a lot to come up to the State House and talk to us in the General Assembly to testify in front of uh, committees, subcommittees. Um, but they did a remarkable job being champions of this very common sense policy that will greatly benefit the children of our state. Uh, the first, we'll hear from uh, Zoe Calcutt. Come on up. Hello, my name is Zoe Calcutt, and I am a member of Yeah at DSS. We are youth engagement advocates, but we are many things. We are scholars, parents, athletes, artists. We all have some type of foster care experience, but we all share an important common interest in improving the system. Thank you for this opportunity to speak today. In preparation, I reached out to a normal, another former foster youth who asked me an important question. Why? I answered because it's for the kids. I want them to be happy. I want them to succeed. I started to discuss a few of my friends that are aging out of care to recently or soon. And I realized today is a win for numerous of teens in South Carolina. This bill is something that will ensure that each and every kid that is turning 18 and aging out of the system will have the resources that they desperately need at this time and age. I personally spent almost three years of my life in foster care, and over that time period, I dealt with many challenges, but nothing prepared me for what I would face when I turned 18. But I kept the mindset to make the best out of what I had to push for and that tomorrow will be a better day. I made many friends who became my family, my sisters and my brothers. I stood beside these young people with the care, support, and acknowledgement that they needed and deserved. <sighs> Ooh, sorry, I feel very passionate. I stood, oh, sorry. People truly don't understand the bond that foster friends share, and we shared our stories for days and hours talking about everything from our dream careers to the type of pets we wanted. Many of my friends have expressed plans of going to college to become nurses, doctors, lawyers, cosmetologists, and so many other amazing careers. These teens truly have the potential to become outstanding citizens in South Carolina. I am beyond grateful that I helped play a part in, in securing more support for not just their futures, but all youth in care, and that this bill will help me as well. And this bill will help us smash the, the statistics and become amazing people, truly. Thank you for listening to our voices, Governor McMaster, DSS Director Leach, and all of our elected leaders at the Capitol and everyone else who supported this bill. Y'all stood up for not just me, but every child in foster care. Thank you. And next, I have another member of our group, Sierra. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna move this mic closer because I wanna make sure y'all hear me. Um, so my name is C.R. Burns and I entered the foster care system at 16 years old. While my time in the system could be said to be short, I consider it quite the opposite. Entering the system while I was still a teenager allowed me to begin to learn that my whole life before was dangerous and it was unsafe. 
I began to learn the meaning of safety and security by being in the foster care system that was a system. It wanted to protect me and it wanted to give me anything I needed. When I turned 18, I immediately left out of desire to be on my own. I felt I was ready. I was proven wrong and needed emergency housing two months after I had turned 18. Without reaching out, I would have been homeless and would have been unable to provide food or any basic needs for myself. And then the pandemic happened. Without foster care, I would have been out in the world, likely forced to go back to my abusive parents and gone through more hardships. Returning to foster care, I was able to focus on myself once again and heal my traumas, build my self-confidence, and learn to have healthy relationships. It allowed me more time to prepare for being on my own, for realizing the rush to independence was filled with false hope. When you turn 18, you become a legal adult in the real world, but who will treat you like that one immediately? You can only start building credit at 18, so how in the world will those youth who have no supports to go to for crucial needs like food and a place to live find a safe and secure place to live that they can also afford? This bill signing celebration today gives me hope. As someone who is nearing 21 years old, I feel way more prepared to be on my own than when I was 18. I'm not the girl who just wanted to test her limits and explore the world on her own anymore, because to me, that was all 18 and 19 years old were to me. We, as foster youth, deserve a safe space, no matter our age. Trauma does not disappear once we turn 18, so I thank you all for recognizing that and allowing us a safe space for years to come. I stand here today as an alumni and member of DSS YAH Council to thank you and to encourage you all to keep fighting for those who can care still. This is a huge step in the right direction, and I want you all to know from a youth perspective, this is a huge step of progress that will make future youth's lives much better. To the senators and representatives that sponsor this bill, we thank you sincerely. Because of you, we have a greater chance at a life that is fulfilling and safe and loving. The support from Governor's Office and DSS State Director Leach and his team in the office have been fulfilling in ways I cannot fully put into words. So, thank you. Um, wow, thank you, Zoe <laughs> and Sierra. Um, you can see why the legislation passed, right? They are amazing speakers. Um, and, and just what powerful words. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for sharing your stories. Thank you to all of our, our uh, YEAH members who are here today. Let's give them all a hand one more time. <laughs> Governor McMaster, thank you for your leadership and faith you have placed in me and our team at DSS. The work we do at DSS is grueling and it is nonstop as we serve one in every six South Carolinians. We have a saying at the agency that we are truly better together and are gathering and being together today for this bill signing is making South Carolina and our foster young people beginning this transition to adulthood the very best they can be. Governor McMaster. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> that was very instructive and interesting and inspiring. And I want to thank all those who were involved in bringing us to this day. And just a couple of quick points before we have our ceremonial signing. And that is uh, the, the we speak of the assets of our state very often. We speak of the, the land, the trees, the rivers, the mountains, the institutions. But in the end, the greatest asset we have, of course, is our people. That is our greatest asset. And it takes a long time to develop the kind of culture and the kind of spirit that is exhibited in South Carolina that is really the envy of people all over the world. So when we have our, our most precious assets are our children, our young people, when we have them growing up in a place like this, where for one reason or another that's not at all any fault or any consequence of actions that they took themselves, missing to grab, to grab that, that bottom rung on that ladder, for whatever reason, it is a tragedy. And that is where, one, that is where foster care and a lot of other lovely people come into play to see that that does not happen to our people. But as was mentioned, I think Sierra, it, a lot of us thought at 18 that we knew everything and we found out very quickly uh, that we didn't know anything. Uh, we, we think that we may think the young people, we may think we're prepared uh, for the world, but if you're not supported and guided by someone or some institution, 
it is a very difficult road to hope and ends up often in misery. So this step, Director Leach, it was your instigation that began this some time ago, and now with the help of these legislative leaders, it is, has come to pass. But I want to, before we do this, this, is, this takes us up to 21, by which time, with this kind of support and help, we should be ready, and we should not miss anyone. And you wonder, but for this help or that help or a guiding hand or something along the way, what would have happened? What could have happened? The other day I happened to read a, a poem. I won't read the whole thing because it's too long, but it does have some instructive words. It's a poem written, I think, in about 1850 by a poet named John Greenleaf Whittier. And the name of the poet, the poem was Maud Mullen. That was the name of a young country maiden, as he called her, a country girl. She was probably about your, your age. And the story is about a, a young judge riding into town on a horse. This was years ago through the countryside, and he saw this lovely young woman, and she saw this handsome young man, but because of circumstances, they talked for a while. Each was thinking, I would love to marry that man, I would love to marry that young woman, but for various reasons they didn't, and their lives, of course, were much different than they could have been. So John Grief Whittier wrote these verses, which I'll read quickly. <clears throat> he says, God pity them both and pity us all, whom vainly the dreams of youth recall. For of all the words of tongue or pen, the saddest of these it might have been. So we wonder what might have been for youth going ahead of you. What might have been had they had this help from these people, from this institution. So that is why this is such a marvelous celebration today. Uh, are there any questions by anyone? In that case, we'll do the ceremonial. 